as I talked about, more of the time somebody will come to you uh, depressed, and if they're depressed about half the time, euthymic about half the time, then what you're looking for is really a needle in the haystack. So this glowing part, how patients will present to you with depression. But what you're actually looking for is this little sliver of about 2% of the time they're hypomanic, about 2% of the time they're mixed, and that will make all the difference. So probabilistically, you can look at a lot of these different symptoms. We mentioned some of them earlier, and none of these by themselves um, will say, oh, this, there's nothing pathognomonic, right? There's nothing that says this is someone who's definitely going to be um, manic uh, or um, hypomanic. Um, but early age of onset is a clue. Um, family history is in the middle there. We'll spend some more time on that in a little bit. Um, family history of substance abuse. So they might not come to you saying that there's someone with bipolar disorder or with periods of mania or hypomania, but more likely to have substance um, use. We'll talk about psychomotor agitation and re retardation um, because those can both be clues. But if you add these all up, and of course psychotic symptoms um, are a clue more of bipolar uh, than of unipolar depression, although they can occur with either. So any one of these on their own won't say this person definitely has bipolar instead of unipolar, but you add them all up, and if you start to get more and more clues, then that will weight you towards the side of bipolar depression rather than unipolar.